Hello everyone and welcome to our latest Cloudscape tutorial. In this video we'll be focusing on performance and some of the optimizations that we can do in order to get some really nice high quality real-time clouds. So to start us off we're looking at the default Unreal Engine uh, scene, looking at some of the clouds, we've hidden the landscape so we can get the most sort of um, just purely performance of the sky itself. Uh, we're running on Epic in terms of quality settings and without further ado we've opened up our previous scene that we did from our uh, cinematic rendering and in this video we'll be kind of focusing on bringing this up to speed in more of real-time sort of uh, environment so <clears throat> to start us off reflections look a bit weird because we have turned off real-time ray tracing for the project and in order to get some of these back we'll simply have to use the post-processing uh, volume and in this case, we'll be using uh, Lumen reflections, like so. Next up, we'll be starting by changing some of the parameters on our Cloudscape base actor itself. So a lot of these will be similar to last time. And the focus on this is to try and get as close to visuals as our previous video while gaining a ton of performance. So to start us off, we'll, we will be changing the layer bottom altitude to slightly higher. This kind of cuts off all the screen space ray marching that's being done for the clouds. And basically, the more we can constrain this, the higher quality visuals we can get with less tracing samples. As such, we'll also be lowering the uh, layer height as well, which kind of dictates the maximum height that our clouds will go up into the atmosphere. So a value of around 5 is pretty good, 4.5. Now, at this point, if you're a bit more careful with the way you, are, with the art direction and just sell, settling down on flatter looking clouds closer to the uh, earth, you might be able to get some even better visuals and performance. Next up, in terms of reflections, we're, we're going to go with some quite low numbers here because we will be also lowering the capture resolution of our sky light actor which dick which is uh what drives these reflections later on so we're actually going to lower these quite a bit for shadows and for samples as well shadow tracing distance we're going to lower it a bit more as well just so we can get some really nice looking shadows with low uh samples for the shadows again this is a bit of a almost an artistic kind of choice at this point but overall it has very little impact on visuals you do need to look at the two difference at the two sort of settings side by side to really notice the difference and in this case we're trying to get the most out of our performance next up we're adjusting the bottom occlusion just a little bit so we can get some of that sky color next we're gonna increase the transmittance uh, stop threshold and that basically says that past a certain opacity our clouds are gonna be treated as like a almost like a solid object which can help the ray marching. So going to a high value makes the clouds look solid and going with something a bit lower gives them that little bit of a harsh outline. Now in this case, this isn't too bad as we still have quite a bit of our softer shapes around the edges. And with these kind of harsher outlines, we could just adjust the occlusion a little bit and get that pretty much the same color as before. Next up, we're going to be adjusting the distance, the sort of horizontal distance as to how far out the clouds are being rendered. Now this map shows up a bit of a worst case scenario in that we have a very flat horizon. Now in most cases you may be able to bring this value even lower if you have something like mountains or slightly heavier fog, even things like buildings and trees. And again, the lower this is, the better your performance will be. Next up we have the start tracing max distance which kind of works the same way so we're going to be just lowering this a little bit more. Now, in this case, our clouds cut off pretty much over there without too much of a difference. We can make a little bit of a adjustment there. And if need be, we can adjust that later on with fog, just so we can get a nice realistic looking blend with the um, earth. Next up, we'll be adjusting the view sample count scale and we're going to be disabling the expanded view sample count just because this is mainly for cinematic purposes and we'll be using a very low number like 
probably around two as one is way too few samples at the moment with the current clouds and we get a little bit of noise. So around two is pretty much what we'll be doing, 2.5 maybe depending on um, your scene. Now at this point the video may be getting a little bit of a compression so it may be difficult to see exactly what's going on here. But overall this setting has the biggest impact on performance so the lower this number can go with you maintaining visuals the better. Next up, we're just going to lower the shadow count as well, the samples there. And the, the lower we make it, the sharper our shadows will look. And again, this can save up on quite a bit of performance with it by having sharper shadows on the clouds. And in some cases can improve visuals depending on what you're after. Also, we're just going to lower the reflection sample count a little bit more. We don't really need it in this scene right now. There are other ways to achieve this without having to trace everything. But for the sake of clarity, let's just keep it around what we had originally. Next up, we're going to make some quick changes to our cloud material itself. So the first thing we're going to do is just increase the efficiency a little bit, which can sharpen up our clouds and give us a bit more detail. But again, this does erode the ALF channel, so we get less translucency sort of a softness. Now, depending on what you're after, uh, yeah, get going with a very high value will really sharpen up your clouds and you can bring those back in by increasing the density of the Cloudscape actor. Uh, we kind of showed this off in our previous video where we go for cinematic visuals, but right now a 5.5 is pretty good. We're going to increase the MIP level to 1. This kind of, this can have a good sort of a performance impact on GPUs that are more memory limited as technically you'll be sampling a lower resolution cloud texture. So zero will give you the full resolution and one will kind of soften it up. Though don't worry too much about it as you can add in the uh, noise texture that you have the detail noise settings up above and these can bring back some of that wispy detail while still ha using a lower resolution texture. Now that we've been messing up with some of the samples and the uh, density, we can bring some details in through the multi-scattering settings for contribution, efficiency, occlusion, and the different phases. So these are mostly artistic choices, but by making some tweaks, we could retain a great deal of the visuals. It's always a good idea to save all the changes that we've made so far just so we can get the best sort of look at what our changes have done in terms of performance. And right now we could see that as we move the camera a little bit, we're getting a little bit of a shimmering kind of noise around our, our sky. Uh, let's just delete. We had a waterline actor in this level at some point. So let's just get rid of that as we don't need it. And we have our regular reflection plane back. Like the little shimmering on the reflections that you could see are from the motion blur settings. And we can just do like a quick test to see if re disabling real-time capture on our sky actor improves performance. And in many cases, it will, as at the moment, we're capturing at quite a high resolution. And now we'll be making some changes to our C variables. Now, at this point in the video, it's a good idea to slow it down just to see on what values we settle down. But there's quite a bit of a testing and experimenting and mixing and matching. Uh, we will be posting the final numbers that we went in the video description later on. But here you could see that we're changing the scale of the noise, the intensity, and also the blurriness and the sampling of the volumetric texture. And what we're trying to do is by increasing the sort of blurriness, you could get away with using a lower number of samples to calculate the clouds. But as you could see, you're losing quite a bit of definition and things can start looking a bit rough. So it really is a bit of a balancing act. Here we could see that we're lowering the noise greatly, although yeah, it's quite... Uh, blurry at the moment but this is pretty much what we'll be looking at right now so we're, we're also disabling quite a number of uh, 
rendering features from the clouds like uh, sampling the atmospheric uh, perspective, the distant light sampling, and we could bring some of those details back once again with our uh, material. We'll be, showing off, we'll be showing off how we could bring even more details later on towards the end of the video. Next up, we'll be lowering this sort of a uh, parameter uh, C variable, which basically will lower the number of samples. Now, if you have something of a tornado like we do, which touches the horizon, this is pretty much the area where having a low value here will look really rough. But if you're looking at clouds that are up above you, really high above you, you could increase this by quite a bit and save yourself quite a bit of performance. And this is kind of where the um, overall artistic kind of direction can also help with uh, performance. So here we're kind of disabling like a bunch of our uh, light sampling for our clouds except for the atmospheric light sample as this is our sun and uh, yeah we pretty much need that for shadows and the sort of multi-scattering parameters that we had before so we're now getting some some really nice performance around three to four uh, ms and finally we'll be adjusting our exponential height fog we're gonna disable its uh, volumetric sort of aspect and we're going to be increasing its uh, or rather decreasing its fall off a little bit and just kind of adjusting how it blends with the horizon and this is kind of going to bring a little bit of that color that we lost before when we stopped sampling the aerial perspective and the distant sky so by just adjusting some of these colors this is like an actor that you probably already have in your level uh, things will look a little bit less accurate but it's a lot less uh, calculations that you need to do and uh, Things look pretty good. So finally, we're just going to adjust our um, parameters for our post-process volume. We're going to be changing the FFT bloom to the regular, or rather the convolution bloom to the standard, as that can be very taxing on older GPUs. Next up, our skylight. We're going to lower the cube map resolution quite a bit. So this gives us something really nice to work with in real time. In most cases, this will be pretty sufficient. And as you can see, because we're using lower samples, now it really doesn't make a difference. And as you can see, we can move our sky, our, uh, our sun and our sky is updating correctly. And now you could see that all of this, we wanted to make a test on an older system. So this is a laptop running a Quadro P4000. So this is like a lower end uh, 1080. And at the moment, we're getting some quite nice uh, performance considering we're also capturing at the same time. Although in this level, we did change one thing and that is with our post-process volume, we've kind of set our reflections to use screen space reflections and our global illumination method we actually set to none now we can bring lumen back in and we could see that we're losing quite a bit of performance and uh, this is one potential trade-off that you could definitely use cloudscape in real-time projects is just that using it along with all the bells and whistles in unreal engine can be a bit tricky so this laptop generally struggles with uh, the latest and greatest unreal engine sort of rendering features, but it's something to uh, kind of think about. 